Good morning. All right, so uh, start with prep and then lead right into uh, Synergy Gel sculptured applications so that you guys are going to be able to uh, see how it works out. Let's get right to it. So, what we're gonna end up doing is going through all the steps. I'm going to be using the precision applicator because it really is the easiest way um, to apply. So we're gonna go through the proper prep steps and I've already clipped off the tip. So we're going to pretend that we're pushing the cuticle back. I'm gonna set my electric file to 3000 RPMs. And uh, we wanna go ahead and remove the shine gently from the surface. All right, so just gonna lightly feather everything away. All right, once we've removed all the shine, then what we're gonna end up doing is coming through and, and applying uh, our protein bond. So let's go ahead and take swipe. I'm gonna go ahead and pump the surface. Let's go ahead and cleanse the surface of the nail. Um, what we're gonna end up doing is taking protein bond and coming through with two coats, okay? So I'm gonna do one coat all the way through, and then again, we're going to go in for a second coat. You're gonna apply your second coat after you go through and apply one coat to all 10 fingers, okay? So once this is done, we're going to take base gel and we're going to establish our foundation. Okay, so again, when you guys are working with gels, it's, it's good to have a tile. Um, I also like to have, obviously, a nice wipe. This, you know, you're going to have to have something that is going to be used to clean your brush. Um, it's just nice to have something on the side just in case. All right, so what we're going to end up doing, you're going to notice that I'm pulling through. And once we pull through and we have a nice bead, what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to set this down and I, I kind of split it. So really important that when you're applying your, your base that you apply a nice even coat from cuticle uh, to free edge. And I'm looking for something that is going to be, um, as you can see, nice and smooth all the way, all the way through. Uh, once we've established a nice foundation, you can even see that when I'm using my brush, I like to get in front, so in front, not behind, in front, and I like to push it. So as I'm pushing it through, it's gonna create like a little bit of a pillow not just around the cuticle area, but I'm, I'm, I'm doing the same thing as I'm guiding it down the side. I'm using my brush and I'm sliding it so that I get that pillow on the back side of my brush or the side of my brush as I drag it towards the edge. Once I'm done doing that, we're gonna go inside the light and we're going to set this again. So it has an automatic timer. I don't need to use a low uh, heat mode function yet. That is strictly for uh, building. Um, what we're going to end up doing is um, basically applying it. Let me go and turn around so that you guys can see. So what we're going to end up doing is applying it to all five fingers. So once we're done applying it to all five fingers, that's going to go inside the light. This is going to give you guys an opportunity to work on the other hand. So once you're done, again, inside the light, you're going to be working on the other hand. My suggestion is work pinky to thumb. Don't work thumb to pinky. If you're working thumb to pinky, there's a tendency for the, the thumb to slide. Okay, when are you restocking on dust collectors? They will be here probably in October. All right, so yeah, it is what it is with everything that's going on around the world, especially with COVID. Um, shipping and handling production has come to a snail's pace. Okay, let's go ahead and get right back to this. All right, so what we're gonna end up doing once we're done building this is we have to be able to establish a free edge. So we're going to take our form and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-pinch and we're going to get off, we're going to get this on. So I'm basically coming in, 
I'm going to establish a really, really, again, tight application, nice and straight all the way through. Um, the key to building something tight, especially with gel, has everything to do with control. So there's two ways of doing it. Uh, I prefer to use the precision applicator because it's super easy, but I also have my brush on the side. And once I have my brush on the side, what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to, uh, to squeeze it out onto the front of the nail. So what I'll do is I'll squeeze everything out onto the front and then I'll use the tip of my brush uh, to kind of drag it out to the desired length that I want. Once I actually have it on, if I need to take my brush and quickly come in and do detail work, this is very easy for me to come in and just kind of get it to right my edges, right? As you can see, and then once I am done doing that, I want to be able to go inside the light. Oops. Oh no. That's not I hit the bottom of the light. I hit the bottom of the light. That's funny. Let's go ahead and redo that again. So if your client hits the bottom of the light, like Greg Salo, then what you're going to end up doing is just taking a little bit more and just bringing it on. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just want to be able to get a really, really nice edge because I'm going to end up filing this into perfection. All right, so using the tip of my brush, getting it all the way tight to the corners, flush to the natural nail, and then we're going to go inside without hitting the light. All right. So I'm kind of holding this off to the side. I'll give you guys that view. All right, so um, technically I don't have to sit here and hold the hand, but I'm working, with a, I'm working with a fake hand. So what I need to do is just make sure that I get it inside the light so that it doesn't, it doesn't uh, pop off. Right, it looks so effortless. It really, really is. I mean, honestly, working with uh, the precision applicator makes it simple. All right, so what I've done is I've just freeze it into shape. Oops, sorry about that. Let me just get right back to it. And you're going to notice that um, we're going, we've built a, a free, so if, if I pinch right here at the bottom of the form, one of the things I like to do to ensure is I'll take, you know, a, my magic wand, or I can even take this. If I'm pulling from the front of the net of, of the form, I'm going to be able to release it. Again, I, I could care less if it looks like it's off to the side because when I'm filing this into shape, I could see the form that I'm going to be able to create. All right. So once we've established a free edge, um, then what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to build the body. Okay, so what I like to do, again, is I want to be able to squeeze enough product. Let me go ahead and, sorry, let me get a little bit closer so that you guys can see. So what I want to be able to do is squeeze enough product uh, around the cuticle area. I'm just going to, it's like I'm pillowing with the brush. So as I come through and I start to work it all the way down the side, I'm going to continue to squeeze the product out on to the nail all the way down. Yeah, the beautiful part about working gel is not only is there no smell, but it's not going to dry until I finish it. So you could see even to this point, as I start to bring it out, I'm gonna bring a little bit more out onto the tip of the nail. Okay, so I, I have the basically the, 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 some of the body, it's not fully complete. Now, once I'm done doing this, this is really important. As you guys can see, there is a low power mode right here. I'm literally going to go directly inside the light. So if you are working, again, with the precision applicators, the best part about working with the precision applicators, concealer pink or concealer peach, is you could literally build that thickness. You could set the light to low power mode, you could go directly in, and your customer's gonna be like this. <sighs> yeah, you don't feel anything, which is incredible. Um, 
this is game changing on many different levels. Game changing for application, uh, game changing uh, with speed, game changing with basically how it feels on your client's fingers when you cure it because you don't get that nuclear effect, right? That gel can bring. Um, I feel that most of the classes that I've been teaching has been acrylic based. Uh, I'm spending this whole entire week going over gel because I want to show you guys how easy this is. This, again, using this type of an applicator makes all the difference in the world. And uh, for those of you guys that are using it right now, you see it. This is not a poly gel, all right? This is not a blend between an acrylic and a gel. This is a hard gel. Um, we don't have a poly gel in our system. I don't teach it. It just, to me, does not uh, hold up as strong as an acrylic or a hard gel. Um, again, at the end of the day, if you guys want to go odor free, if you want something that's going to be able to hold up as strong as acrylic, this is really what you guys need. All right, so let's get right back to this. This is already set. Now, one of the things you're going to notice when I get to this point, let me bring, sorry, I need to bring this up a little bit closer. You can see I have it mounted on, I have it mounted on that so that it makes it really, really easy for me to maneuver. I'm going to be low. I'm completely low on that front edge. So I need to be able to fill that. That's really important. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to squeeze enough product basically from this point all the way through. And then I just need to make sure that I'm bringing it all the way down to the tip. This is going to kind of fill in that gap. Once I actually have that established, then what I'm going to do is just kind of lightly feather back that area. Um, you're never going to be able to build because the gel will move, right? I'm never going to be able to build it in, in one, um, depending on the length, but what I can do is I can add. So one of the things I love to do is I love to use my brush just to kind of feather it and then that's a whole entire thing. One of the one of the things we teach is having that feather-like touch just on the surface of the gel. And then if you have that feather-like touch on the surface of the gel, chances of uh, building bubbles or any kind of problems are going to be minimal. All right, last cure, last cure inside light. We have to make sure, and I don't need to work low power mode anymore. I am literally going to go inside. The, the reason why is because I've already established a base. I've already established a foundation. So if you build a foundation like I did it from the beginning, that initial cure that's closest to the natural nail, that's where you're going to feel a little bit of warmth. If I've already established the foundation layer, then all I need to do is fill in the gap, which I've done. Uh, the rest after it cures out, which I need a full 60 seconds after this done. Um, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to wipe the surface off, put this back on, cleanse the surface, file it into shape, um, and then your choice. If you decided that you wanted to add color to the surface, poly gel is a mix of acrylic and gel. It's a blend of acrylic and gel, correct and you need some type of a solution to work it, like an alcohol or an acetone. I think preferably alcohol. All right, so that's set. Let's go ahead and wipe this. So gel is like shellac. No. Um, this is like, shellac is like a gel polish. This is a gel, right? This is a gel polish, okay? This is a hard gel that's used to build and sculpt nails. This is a gel paint, right? This is what you use to do art, right? Or paint the surface. So gel comes in many different forms. It comes in polish, it comes in paint, and it comes into an actual um, product that you can, you, you can sculpt and, and, and build structure with. 
you can't build structure with these, okay? We can't use your monomer to work with polygel. No, you can't. Why isn't polygel good? I, I never said it wasn't. It's just not good for us. It's just not good for us. I just do not, it, it does not hold up from my testing. You know, again, it's, it's from the testing that we've done, I, I won't bring it into Young Nails line because I just don't feel like it can hold up to an active lifestyle. Okay, so what we're gonna end up doing is we're going to end up wiping um, all this away, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up filing this into shape. So, so at this point, sorry, let's go ahead and bring in our trusty vent. So I've loved about, again, having a vent when you're working with gel is, is key. Um, what I'm going to end up doing is just trying to bring my edges in the best we can. Need to do the same thing on the opposite side. Oops. Bring it onto the opposite side. Filing this with a phone in my face is always a challenge. Okay, you can see how, again, as I'm building it through, I have my upper arch. I need to make sure that I'm putting pressure on the very, very front end to, to bring it up to that point. I need to do the same thing on the opposite side. So again, I have my lower arch hangs, so I need to start from the lowest point and bring that all the way up, all the way up to the corner so that my lower arch matches, okay? So once I've done that, I want this to pop out. Let's go ahead and file the balance in the shape. Has anyone tried? No. The dust collector will be back in October. All right, so what we're gonna end up doing is using uh, my safety bit. And once we're like here at the side profile, what I'm gonna be able to do is kind of take down a little bit of thickness through through the tip, through the upper arch to make sure that I have really, really good balance up through here. And then as I'm coming down through the body, I want to be able to work the C-curve in one direction all the way through. And then I'm going to go all the way around the perimeter of the nail to take down the cuticle area to make it as obviously as tight as we possibly can. And then what I'm gonna do, as soon as I'm done doing the eye formation, I'm gonna end up following through the whole entire body of the nail before I take my hand file and do all my detail work. Because I still have a little bit of width. I still have a little bit of width right here. You can see it. So I'm not going to attack it until I actually have a little bit better shaping. And then what I'm going to end up doing is making sure I'm coming down one side, down the other. And you can see how the shape is really starting to come together to make sure again that my lower arches are completely filed well. Let me go ahead and give you guys this perspective. No, no, I'm not promoting poly gel. I don't use it. We don't have poly gel. I don't teach it. I don't use it. Won't bring it inside the line. I'm showing you guys how to do synergy gel with the precision applicator tubes, right? So you can see as I'm shaping the structure, even though I've added so much to the, to the top end, what I'm actually able to do is continue to shape this to a very, very solid structure that's not gonna have any marbleizing or anything, right? You can see, once it's completely shaped, uh, Cover Peach, no, this is concealer. This is, um, 
guys. That was so weird. If you guys have an iPhone, if you guys have an iPhone, like sometimes like you'll be talking and Siri will come on just for no reason at all. All right, so I'm lightly going to go around the edge just to kind of buff this into shape. I'm gonna go ahead and come through. I'm gonna clean the surface. So I wanna be able to show you guys, basically, you're going to be able to build, I, build, I built a really long structure because I wanted to show you that you can build something super long. Um, once you've set yourself up for a really, really long nail, then what you're going to be able to do is come through and hit it with um, any type of artwork. What I'm going to end up doing is using protein bond, but you notice that when I come through, you don't see any marbleizing through the surface, and I've added, right? So I built the base first, I built it all the way up, and you can see that there is nothing there so if you decided that you wanted to do some spectacular art on top you know one of the things that you can do is you can use any one of the gel paints that young nails has for uh, from the mission control uh, collection <clears throat> i'll show you guys what you guys can do you can take we'll take fizz and let's take a, a bunch of other colors. We have Mega Jam. I'll use Clash. Uh, let's see what we have here. I'll use Taser. And I have a little bit of Overdrive and Giant. All right. So we'll use we'll use Fizz as we'll use Fizz. Um, as the as as the base and what we're going to do is again i'm not for me once you actually have the foundation established what if you want rhinestones what if you want rhinestones you're going to have to secure them with a gel you could use clear sculpture and then after you set it you're going to have to use finished gel and secure the edges um with with that, okay, so what I'll do, if I'm using Fizz, which is, which is white, I'm not really concerned about trying to um, get it absolutely perfect because of the design that we want, but you can see how well the paint goes over the surface. Right, it's not gonna move anywhere. I'm just establishing just a foundation layer. And then what I'm gonna do is just use my brush. I'm just gonna to continue to work the excess all the way around. Try to get this as close to my edge as I possibly can, establishing a really good foundation layer, okay? All right, so once we actually have foundation layer actually set up, we're gonna we're going to set this inside the light. All right. What is the gel sealer for? A gel sealer is to secure the rhinestones. So if you're doing rhinestone work, you have to be able to either glue the rhinestones on, um, or you have to be able to secure it with clear sculpture, set it, and then what you need to do is take finished gel, and then you have to be able to use like a, a small little detailer like this, and then kind of secure it around the edges of the stones so they don't pop off. And that's gonna give you crazy wear. But just look, at the end of the day, if you guys are doing rhinestone work, um, you have to make sure that you realize as long as it takes you to put them on, it's gonna take you just as long to take them off. So you have to charge for the time and the cost of the rhinestones, right? Uh, I've been seeing some wrinkling with my seal top coat. Uh, what top coat is it? Okay, so let's get right back to this. And if you guys, if it's one of mine, then you can send me just uh, 
you could send me just some of the experiences that you have and then I'll be able to help you just DM me. Okay, so what we've what I've done is I've just put down a a irregular coat. I just kind of cleaned up around the edges. For me, I, I want to be able to get something a little bit. Um, I want to be able to get something a little bit better coverage. So what I'm going to end up doing is coming through with a second coat. Yeah. So if you're having issues, just let just DM me and I'll be able to help you. I'm not going to be able to do it right now. It's impossible. DM me. Let me know which top coat you're having issues with, and I'll be able to work through it and help you with it. Okay, so you can see that I'm going to get really great coverage. Again, I want to be able to go inside. I'm going to set this. While I'm sitting inside the lamp, if I was doing the same design in another hand, I would work a, a, um, a different hand. There's no reason why you should... Um, do all five. I usually do two or three so that it doesn't move and then I work on the other hand. I do the same thing, establish foundation. And then once I'm done establishing foundation, then you can paint out whatever you decide. I'm just gonna go with a little bit of line work on the surface um, and then hit it with a, a gel top coat after I'm done. How do I keep from getting indents on my natural nail? Um, like, I, I don't understand the question. Like, what kind of indentations are you getting? Are you getting them on the tip? Are you getting after you wear acrylic? Are you slamming your nail? Um, are you over filing? Uh, you know, is it from gel polish? Is it from acrylic? The, you know, make sure to use white before using gel. So there's people that are answering questions. All right, so what we're gonna end up doing now after we've established color is we're going to take a few different colors. I'll use Power Up, I'll use Mega Jam, and then let's go ahead and use Clash. a few different colors and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a really really fine micro detailer and I want to be able to establish some really really cool lines so what I'm going to end up doing is just taking my my, my dot right and kind of pulling through want to be able to do is establish some really really cool right. just give it a and all I'm doing is laying out some abstract abstract lines I'll go back and forth from from all this and then what we'll go is we're gonna do some from from the bottom as well You don't need a lot, right? So all I'm doing is just using my brush to come through, drag it out. All the way down to the bottom. And then I can do the same thing again from, I could do the same thing from the bottom. I'm going to use the tip of my brush, work in some abstract lines doesn't have to be doesn't have to be perfect all we're trying to do is establish a little bit of 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 color all right so i've got a little bit of color all the way through and then i'm just going to make sure that i'm working it all the way down I'm just going to add just a touch of black. I'm using my micro detailer because I want to be able to get as thin of lines as I possibly can. 
you can use a not only this but you can use a um, an ombre brush to be able to create some really really cool effects as well all right so once we've established uh, some really really cool lines in the background I'm gonna go ahead and blast this inside the lights boom I'm gonna freeze it so I don't need a lot of time I know that it's only gonna take me probably uh, I'd say like 10 or 11 seconds to set it before I go ahead and apply the top gel over the surface let me go ahead and grab some finish and then finish is going to fill really, really well. It has to be filed off. That is correct. Yeah, for all of you guys that are doing nails at home, you have to remember that, um, you know, oops, this is not it. This is it. So the finish is great because the finish is going to be able to fill any space the gels created emission control is going to dry completely tack free so you're going to be able to see how it's going to fill in space right and again this is just random um, I did a YouTube video on something like this a long time ago but you know again hitting it up with color on all dimensions there's a lot of there's a lot of ways that you can, again, decorate your customer's nails. The whole purpose of this was to show you that it's not about, you know, for me, it's, it's, it's not about putting it inside the nail. It's about creating the nail. And then once you create the nail, um, you have your canvas that you're going to be able to paint on the surface. Again, just an abs random abstract nail. You can, there's so many ways of, of, of creating color, right? Um, you can choose to do nails like that. This is a design that I actually, I use my electric file to cut out, but if you decide that you want to be able to paint your borders, you can paint your borders with paint. Um, if you do floral patterns uh, on the surface, um, you'll be able to do that as well. Uh, tie-dye, if you guys have seen, there's been a lot of tie-dye that's been out there right now. We don't have neon paints, but, you know, again, at the end of the day, you can, uh, the closest neon paint we have is the uh, Mega Jam, which is the really, really bright pink that just spilled all over the place. Pretty awesome. <laughs> show you guys my mess. That's what I'm going to have to clean up right now. All right, so... Again, once we're done, this is completely this is completely finished. So one of the things I want to be able to do is just kind of oil oil that surface. But you can see, right? So that that's the whole thing is is can can you build a set of nails? Does it have to be this shape or, or length? No. Can you add some abstract nature? Yes. Yeah. So I have one nail that's like this. Maybe the second one uh, has a, a border edge. The third one has a glitter press. The fourth one is just straight white. Um, but this here, you know, the foundation color is always going to be that color right there is going to be the pink and if you establish a killer foundation for those of you guys who are artists out there you're going to be able to take that canvas and you're going to be able to paint painting on the surface is the easiest thing to do doing glitter press on the surface is the easiest thing to do um, the paint is also going to add a little bit of volume which is going to add strength because i have again two coats of white i have lines and I have finished top coat on top of the enhancement. When the customer comes back in three weeks, uh, for me to be able to remove the design is going to be a lot easier than having to dig it out of the nail and restructure the whole entire thing. All right, so that's that's what it comes. Yeah, you can use, I see right there, you can use a Sharpie for, for tie-dye effect as well. Okay, so tomorrow what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna take that nail, we're gonna file off the design 
We're going to take it down. We're going to restructure it. We're going to rebuild it. Uh, so that it is more of a coffin shape. Um, it is, uh, again, probably the most important uh, asset in your technique arsenal is understanding how to rebalance your work. You're not going to be making your money doing full sets. You're going to be making your money removing and reapplying your sets. And obviously you have to be able to do it in a reasonable amount of time. It's not about taking three hours to do your nails. It's about how efficient can you be with the right tools, clipping off your electric file, taking down, using your forums, restructuring, rebuilding, rewind, repeat rewind, repeat. And that is what I'm gonna be doing on a regular basis. Okay, so uh, for those of you guys that didn't catch this, you could watch this from the beginning. Um, you'll have an opportunity to, again, right? So today, just really focused on creating that abstract, right? That abstract nail. Um, it doesn't have to be this. It could be anything that you guys choose to do. Use your imagination. Um, remember, uh, it, it's again, there, there's a lot of artists out there. There's a lot of art. There's a lot of inspiration. There's a lot of fashion. There's a lot of jewelry. You can take those concepts and you could, you know, use your skills to duplicate uh, or reimagine and recreate for your own style. All right. Have a wonderful day. Peace.